Hey guys, welcome to the Chatelaine Experience Part 6. Um, it's been a while since I've done an update. Uh, the last time we spoke, all of this area was still tan fabric. None of this was filled in. I don't even think I had any specialty stitches in there yet. Um, so now, as you can see, quite a bit has changed. So let's talk about what we've worked on. We have some road stitches. We have some Algerian eyelets. Um, oh, those Jessica stitches. Those were tricky. I love with the petite, mm -mm, with the um, Karen water lilies, how the Jessica stitches go from like green to turquoise. They go into different shades. I love the effect that that has. Um, so I think that was it. We have the eyelet stitches that went all the way around. We have the Jessica stitches that went all the way around. I'm not the greatest fan of the Jessica stitch. Sometimes you could clearly see um, the opening like right here. That's a pretty good one. And then see how it's smaller there. And then look at that. It's almost in this one. They're almost non-existent. Um, so that's a, a problem that I have with the Jessica stitches. That sometimes the hole will show up and sometimes it won't. So that um, indicates to me that maybe I need a little bit more practice. So um, I know that Sarah just posted an update on Stitch Mania, and she did her first Jessica Stitch. I don't remember which Chatelaine she's working on, but she's working on her first one. And she just did her first Jessica Stitch, and it was absolutely perfect. Jessie Marie, for the life of me, I don't know how um, you do your Jessica Stitch and put your initial in there. If you guys don't know, Jessie Marie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff she, her signature, because her name is Jessica, obviously, her signature on all of her um, completed works is a Jessica stitch with an S in the middle for her last name, the first initial of her last name. So Jesse, if you're watching, I would love to see, because you have obviously a lot of experience with the Jessica stitches, I would love to see a tutorial on how you do yours or anybody for that matter that has mastered the Jessica stitch um, to help me or anybody else that's doing the Chatelaines avoid this. Like clearly I did these two incorrectly um, because the ones that I've always seen modeled, they have the big hole in the middle. So maybe Jessie's stitches are just bigger than mine were so she can fit that S in there. See that one is a little closed up too. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but it's overall, it was a fun experience. Um, but yeah, that's what I had a hard time with on the last go round. Um, the Algerian eyelets, not a problem. You just have to remember to pull, you know, really pull to create that hole. Um, and if there are some of you that are working on specialty stitches for the last, for the first time, um, don't be afraid to pull. Don't be afraid to pull that fabric or that thread so you can get that hole because that's what makes it an Algeria, an Algerian eyelet. That's what creates the eyelet. So you, see, you can see my hand underneath there. Um, it's basically like pulled thread work. Um, forgive my ignorance if it's not, but that's what I'm comparing it to um, because you have to obviously pull it to get the effect. Um, so what I'm doing now, you can see I'm starting to work on the outer perimeter, which means I'm working my way out, um, into the rest of the design. So the last time I spoke about a couple of things, I want to thank everybody that gave me, excuse me, that gave me feedback on how to attach that big bead in the middle. Um, I'll make sure, guys, I'm sorry, I have the hiccups. I'll make sure that when I do attach that bead, um, I'll record it. So you'll actually see me 
bumble my way through it um, because some of the Chatelaines, they do have that a bead as the focal point in the center part of the focal point. So I'll record it, um, me actually stitching it so you can see my process as well as those Tyler beads that I was talking about. Um, if you all recall, I was talking about the issues I had with the Tyler beads that I originally had stitched on here, but they weren't laying properly. Um, and I don't know if it was due to lack of experience or what, I'm not sure, but I had a hard time with them. Um, so I will record that for you guys as well. So the only thing that's left in the center section is beading. So anywhere that you see the tan fabric, and again, this is 28 count uh, Monaco, if anybody was wondering, but anywhere you see the tan fabric is going to be beads. So one thing to keep in mind too, you see my turtle right there, the turtle needle minder, he represents the top of my project. And as you can see, he's on the left hand side. The reason for that is because this is an 18 by 27 inch um, piece of fabric or 18 by 20 by 24 inch, I think it is actually. Yeah, 20 by 24 inch piece of fabric. Um, so because I started working on the pattern with the working on the pattern with the fabric on a horizontal axis, I can't put it in my millennium frame horizontally. It's not wide enough and I don't feel like dealing with my big 36 inch bars. So I put it in there vertically. So now the side is now pointing to the left and I have to really be cognizant of the direction of my stitching because it'll be very easy um, to mess that up. But I've been practicing sideways stitching with another pattern that I have that is also being worked on the horizontal axis. axis. Um, so when I put it in my bars, I've been working on it vertically. So I have a little bit more experience now with being very careful with that um, and remembering to work my stitches um, in the opposite direction that I would normally stitch them. Um, the other thing that I talked about in my last video was long beading needles versus short beading needles. Um, I have learned that I am a fan of the shorter being, beading needles. However, I have poked myself with those beading needles so many times, and I don't believe I have them nearby um, to show you which ones I'm speaking of, but they're the Dritz size 10 beading needle, which is shorter than the longer needles that we normally see are easier to um, um, obtain. These you actually have to go into the notion section of um, Joann's to get these beading needles while the other beading needles, the longer ones, are what's more readily available in the cross stitch, cross -stitch section. Can't speak. So the only problem I have with those needles is that they're super sharp. They're not, they don't have the same um, rounded end, rounded point, for lack of a better word, like a normal tapestry needle would. It doesn't have a, a blunt end to it. It has a very sharp end, like a sewing needle. So some of the recommendations that I've received from my fellow stitchers are to use a 28, um, a size 28 petite tapestry needle. And I have tried that. The only problem with that is sometimes you can't get the eye of the needle um, or the top of the needle through the bead. Um, while the beading needle needle is by design narrow enough to go through the bead. So that's my only problem with that. Somebody else mentioned, and I'm on the lookout for these, are ballpoint beading needles where they're actually beading needles, but instead of having the super sharp tack end, it has more of a little ball at the end and that's what they're called they're called ballpoint beading needles so I'm on the lookout for those because the short beading needles um, I handle them much better I bead much better with them but I poke myself so many times um, I think I was working on my African beaded princess Erica Bidu if you follow me on my other videos or if you follow me on social media um, you know she is all beads no cross stitch so I was doing a lot of beading with her and I poked myself so many times. One went underneath my nail. We know how that feels. 
Um, so if I find those ball point, ball pointed beading needles, I will definitely give them a try and let you guys know. Um, but I just wanted to give a quick update. Thank you, Janet Felicity Stitches for reminding me that I needed to do this. Um, and that's it for the shadow lane experience this go round. Um, I think I'm going to try to work on this piece in my rotation for two weeks. Um, today is August 12th, so we will see how that goes. Um, so hopefully I'll have another update for you at the end of August. Happy stitching for now. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Thank you. Bye.